All right, hey guys, it's Dominic. Um, this is my video to show you guys how to dual boot, use Fedora, compile, and terminal, among other things. So here, let's begin. So first of all, you want to uh, go to the internet and uh, you know open up a new tab and go to Universal USB Installer. Um, it is a pretty awesome tool that lets you just about install any operating system on your uh, flash drive and uh, through that you can uh, you know install just about any operating system you'd like um, I was having some technical difficulties so uh, I'm going to ignore my uh, network thing right there so yeah I can go ahead and go to uh, so uh, when you Google it, it'll be the first one on the list, and uh, you know it's uh, pretty easy instructions here. Um, but I'll walk you through it anyways. If you go ahead and click download UUI, and uh, it's a very small program, so it takes just you know a couple seconds here, and I already have it on my computer. So um, you know, let me go ahead and pull that up. Now, Universal USB installer doesn't actually like install to your computer so every time you run it um, you can't you won't be able to find an icon anywhere on your computer because every time um, it kinda just runs so here I am I uh, you know started up and here there are just tons and tons of operating systems some of them aren't even operating systems that you can choose from um, just all sorts of downloads. So we're going to go ahead and Fedora Live Desktop. Now if you see here, there is a download link. You can click that, but it's gives, it generally gives older versions. So we're going to go ahead and go to Fedora. And, uh, you know, it's the first page, you know, if you Google Fedora. And we're going to go ahead and download the updated uh, ISO image of Fedora. Because I believe if you click that link, it'll get you Fedora 19 which in the end of it it'll save you some hassle if you get Fedora 20 just right off the back. So you got Fedora 20 desktop edition and this website's a little confusing because the first thing it gave you is a 64-bit ISO and not everyone here has 64-bit unfortunately. So we can go ahead and click desktops um, and there's a few desktop uh, you know ISOs here GNOME is definitely the most popular, so and I'd say it's probably one of the easiest ones to work with. But um, you have two choices: 32-bit and 64-bit. So right now, I'm showing you how you can get to uh, see what kind of computer you have. So you go to Control Panel, and then System, and then System, and yeah, right here it says System Type, 32-bit operating system. Real easy to find once uh, once you open that up. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and download 32-bit uh, Fedora 20. And thankfully, because this is actually a pretty big file, thankfully I already have it downloaded. So I'm going to just go ahead and close that and uh, pull it up. Because why waste time downloading it again? And so yeah, I'm just uh, wherever you download it to, you just got to pull up the ISO. On my computer it lo looks like a little disk. On yours it might look slightly different. All right, so here now you can pick your USB flash drive. Now you got to be careful. Uh, the program's a little funky sometimes, so you got sometimes check that box and then uncheck it to find your flash drive. Um, if uh, you look very closely, uh, um, when you check that box, it shows a ton of other drives. Make sure that you're using your flash drive. So UUI is actually the name of my flash drive right now. Um, so you got to make sure you're using that. If you try and use something else, you could, you know, seriously damage your computer. Hence the use with caution. All right, and then uh, if you if you can help it, uh, you should click uh, format your flash drive. Uh, I didn't click it there because I didn't think I needed to. But if uh, for whatever reason this doesn't work, then you have to click format. Um, the extraction takes quite some time, so I went ahead and skipped that, but it's pretty much extracts and then you hit close. Alright, so now uh, I couldn't screencast my screen here, but you're going to hit F2 when you boot, or it's F8 or F11, or uh, not F11, F10, depending on your computer to get into BIOS or your system setup. 
So here I have pulled up my BIOS. You can, you know, look at some of the more interesting stats about your computer. And here I headed over to boot. Just about every BIOS I've seen has some sort of boot option. You see I have all these different options and I can press F5 and F6 to change the values. So I, you want to make sure your USB device is uh, put up to the topmost priority because you want to boot from that OS and then afterwards you want to exit saving changes. If you don't exit saving changes you're going to boot up Windows or whatever else and you're going to wonder why the operating system isn't you know booting up from your flash drive so here's fedora live so i went to fedora live is highlighted so you go ahead and click enter and then that takes quite some time to load up um you know depending on your computer because my computer is pretty old and then once that finally loads up you uh go ahead and uh, click install to hard drive now unfortunately i don't have the I don't really have the option of showing you guys how to do it without you know screwing up what I already have but it's pretty self-explanatory you click install the hard drive and then um, you know afterwards you end up with a menu like this um, you know where you can pick from either Windows 7 or Fedora or whatever but uh, yeah when you install the hard drive it'll ask you you know for username a password for different settings among other things so it's pretty interesting and then this is what your start screen looks like um, you know and then alright so now I'm on my Linux distro and I'm go ahead and casting this stuff to you so um, I went through it really quickly but if you scroll up to the top left and hit activities you can search for terminal um, so here I'm showing you a command called sudo this makes you the super user which gives you administrative privilege privileges on your machine uh, SU uh, gives you kind of a more permanent super user privileges. Um, it kind of logs you into the root user, whereas sudo just um, makes it temporarily for that command. Uh, yum here is used to do just about everything with Fedora. You can do yum install, which uh, if you type in a package after that, it'll install something. Yum remove a package. Yum search a package. Uh, yum search will search through the repositories online and see if a package exists or they'll they'll search based on a keyword um, which is really neat so for example I have to be administrator so I'll do sudo yum install GCC of course if you look I already have GCC installed but if I didn't it would um, it would ask me do I want to install it yes no otherwise so here I'm gonna install something that I haven't installed before called Istanbul um, it's some kind of screencast uh, software and it says is this okay yes D and then no I'm not sure what D is never used that option but I'm sure if you wanted to you could look into it um, if you've seen it now I've typed clear twice it kinda clears your terminal makes things easier to read um, LS list files and CD chains changes directories um, if you notice to the right of localhost, that's kind of what directory I'm in. So the tilde symbol is home directory. Um, so see, so yeah, I hit ls and it shows, you know, I'm in desktop. And then, I don't know, I was a bit confused at this point. So I kind of went ahead and closed an open terminal because I don't really work as super user a lot, except for like specific commands because uh, the root has a whole separate file system. So I went ahead and closed the terminal and uh, opened it again because I did not want to be in super user, um, you know, capabilities. And if you see it, now I'm back to a dollar sign before it was a, a pound symbol. So, alright, so here I'm showing you that uh, sublime text right there is my, my IDE of choice. Um, it's kind of hard to install, so I'm not really going to explain that, but gedit is the default IDE for uh, Fedora and that loads up here um, alright so you got this text thing looks a little bit like notepad you know except with a different skin of course uh, your Fedora is not gonna have the same skin I did a little tweaking in the settings so here um, you know just a kind of a regular Windows type file system um, you might notice that a lot of your files don't have extensions it's because uh, the way Linux works extensions aren't really you know uh, um, aren't really uh, needed by the system to run files so here I opened up hello.c 
and uh, on the bottom here you can click and there's all sorts of languages that it can uh, help you identify and use as you're working with it so um, I already have the file written up so you can go save it I'm saving it into my documents hello.c and uh, it's just gonna print hello world so here um, now that I have the C code compiled or uh, written excuse me um, I can go ahead and uh, compile it with GCC. Now, if you can see, GCC is, r or not GCC, uh, terminal is really, really uh, word specific. So you have to type things in just right when you're referencing files or issuing commands. So here I wrote GCC doc document slash hello because I have to designate the location of my file. And then I put a hyphen, Z a hyphen O in order to specify output and then I put document slash hello to name my output file and name its location. Also you can see here that um, after I had, after I had created the thing I uh, specified document slash hello to um, to run the program. Here I'm showing you that uh, it's sometimes you don't want to deal with typing in you know the file location because maybe you have it w in a folder in a folder in a folder makes it a lot of uh, makes it a lot of work so if you use CD you can change directory into the directory with your file and that way if in the bottom example here you can see I wrote GCC hello dot C output hello and uh, that is a that is a lot easier than having to write documents every time so if you just move into the documents folder and then yeah that's just about it if you have any further questions uh, please let me know and uh, you know good luck with ECS 30